Hello and welcome to the Do-It-Yourselfers Guide on how to use a power drill. In this video, we'll be specifically talking about a handheld power drill. We'll be answering a bunch of common questions surrounding the tool. And we'll be showing you how to use it. And use it safely. So, with that said, and without further ado, let's get started with the video. The first thing that we wanted to talk about when we're discussing power drills is what are they? Power drills are a power tool that use electricity to rotate a motor, imparting rotation onto a specialized blade called a drill bit that is then used to cut holes in material, such as wood or metal. Drill bits also come in different varieties, and they're, so they're not just used to drill holes. Some can be used to sand, and some can be used to cut material. There are two main types of drills, corded and cordless. Corded drills have the advantage of being very high power and thus using all that energy are able to rotate faster and rotate with more torque or rotational strength. Corded drills have the disadvantage of being non-portable. In order to get any real extension on them you have to use an extension cord. Extension cords vary from 10 feet to over 100 feet and thus you do have some portability with them but only via that cord. Cordless varieties of drills of course have the advantage that they are portable but they have the disadvantage that they require batteries. Now batteries add more weight to the drill and they also require charging. So a, cord, a cordless drill might only have about 30 minutes of operation time before the battery runs out. If you're going to be working for an extended period of time you're either going to want to take breaks and charge that battery or bring extras. This can drive up the cost. The cordless varieties of drill versus the corded have a significantly higher price even when purchasing the drill for a given power. Drills have a few main parts that I want to talk about. And now I only have the corded variety which is a little bit more simple than the cordless. The first thing I want to talk about is the chuck. The chuck is this entire head assembly right here. It uses rotation to apply a force onto these metal arms and thus holding your drill bit in place. The chuck can fit a variety of different diameters of drill bit, but they have a maximum diameter as well. These are standard quarter inch, three eighth inch, and half inch diameters. So make sure that your drill has the appropriate maximum diameter for whatever drill bit you're using. The next thing I want to show you is this button right here. This is typically where they put the forward and reverse button and so this allows the drill to rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise depending on that button. Forward is typically the direction it used to drill and screw in regularly and reverse is the direction it used to take out screws or remove your drill bit. The next thing I want to talk about is the trigger. On corded varieties this is the main button that determines how much speed and torque you have. By pressing down on the trigger, you send more current through the motor, which in turn allows the bit to move faster and rotate quicker with higher torque. On my drill here, there is a rotating dial which determines how much the trigger is allowed to be pulled down. When it's not pulled down, there's no current and thus it doesn't rotate. And when it's all the way down, it has the highest amount of torque and speed. Additional accessories that you might see are some, some drills may come with lights, others may come with a level, which allows you to determine the horizontal leveling of the, of the drill relative to the ground. And on cordless varieties of drills, they're going to have a dial for changing the torque of the drill and also a, a, a switch which allows you to go from high to low speed. So with that basic knowledge of what drills are, let's go and talk about how to use the drill. To start talking about how to use the drill, I want to start talking about a bunch of different types of drill bits and their applications. The first bit I want to mention is the twist bit. The twist bit is your standard, regular, everyday drill bit. It looks like this. It has very basic, you know, you can consider these regularly sized flutes. This is slightly different than the brad point blade. The brad point blade is mainly designed for wood and has a sharp point at the top just to allow that penetration 
the initial penetration to have it a little bit smoother, and it also has larger flutes so that more material can be taken out of the wood. Flutes are primarily, for, primarily responsible for allowing that wood to move, and other drill bits do not have this, and actually wood chips must be removed manually. The next bit we're going to talk about is the auger bit. The auger bit has extremely large flutes and is ideal for drilling high depth. Next bit I want to talk about for drilling very large diameter holes, we have spade bit and the Forstner. The spade bit allows us to drill large diameter holes and it is a cheap and inexpensive way to do it. The Forstner bit is a similar application, it allows us to drill wider diameter holes but also allows us to create a very smooth surface on the bottom of that. Drill bits come in a few different types of materials. One of them is soft steel. Soft steel bits are lower quality bits. They get dull after use with hardwoods. These are only really recommended for very soft materials and they're the cheapo bits that you're not really going to want for a lot of different types of use. High speed steel or HSS bits have a harder material, harder steel, and they allow for drilling in a number of different types of materials from PVC to wood and even up to metal. Cobalt bits are the next type and they are the hardest of everything we've mentioned. They're highly heat resistant and they're very hard so they're very good for drilling metal. This is your ideal metal drilling bit and this is your only requirement to drill metal. If you have cobalt bit it doesn't matter what your drill is, you really will be able to go fine here. And low speed high torque is the way to go. Along with drill bit materials, there's also different coatings that come on drill bits. The first is black oxide. Black oxide is an upgrade for most bits and it increases durability while also lowering the rate of degradation of the bit. It lowers the chance of rusting and other forms of, of deterioration. The next is titanium, a higher quality performance type coating which allows for a lower friction, which means faster speed, less resistance on the blade, and also, and also like the black oxide, allows for increased toughness and, and hardness. As far as drilling technique goes with these bits and different types of material, there's a few different rules of thumb that we want to get out of the way. To drill a hard material, we really want to keep a low RPM and keep high torque. We want to allow that, that drill bit to go into it very, at very high downward force and the rotation needs to be slow but very strong. For soft material, they recommend using downward force along with high RPM and low torque so that you really, get, you really sail through that material. So with that, I want to go and show you some actual demonstrations. We're going to talk about how to put a drill bit in and as well, we're going to talk about some basic drilling technique. So the first thing I want to show you is how to change the drill bit. So we're starting out with the drill bit obviously inside of the drill and in order to to remove this we're going to have to talk about the chuck a little bit. The chuck of the drill bit has a bottom part which is attached to the motor and a top part which allows the teeth here to catch on the blade when rotated. My drill has a, a directional marker listed on it which says open and close. Close, open allows the arms to get further apart from each other. So if we loosen this with our hands, we start loosening this grip on the, on the bit. So actually after a very initial loosening we can remove the blade. If we were going to insert a larger diameter drill bit, we would open it further and thus get these arms further apart. So now that we want to get our drill bit back in, the optimal distance that it should be inside the bit, inside the chuck, is about a half an inch. So insert it there. And all we have to do is use our hand and hold the top part which rotates and holds it. And all, then we have to start, and then we can go forward on the drill and bring it, and bring in the teeth. So, and there we are. We caught the bit, 
and I like to hold it and get it real, get it real tight. You can also do this by hand by just rotating them relative to each other and tightening. So yeah, there, there is how to get your drill bit changed. So the next thing I want to do is show you how to drill a piece of wood. And there's a few important things to know about this. The first thing is that we always want to drill at a perpendicular angle from our wood. 90 degrees. I am going to start slowly on the drill and then actually go faster once I break the surface. So here I am, I am beginning to start the drill rotation. I'm pressing down and I go faster as I go and all the way through. It's a good thing, it's a good idea to rotate the drill when you come out as well because that helps remove the blade. Additionally, I want to show you that I'm wearing safety glasses. Safety glasses are a, uh, a very helpful thing here because we don't want to get dust in our eyes. It's always nice to use safety glasses when working with wood. And note that the wood is clamped down. When we're drilling, we want the wood to be secure and so that it doesn't move, especially if we are, especially if we're trying to go straight. I also want to mention that if you want to drill only to a certain depth, you can measure out a distance on your drill bit, say I want to drill an inch. And you can mark that with a piece of tape and then you can use that to guide your drilling. So right here I have an inch marked off on the drill bit. We'll, we'll, make, this, uh, we'll make this a quarter inch so we, we know we're not going to go all the way through the wood. So about right up there, I, I'm not, I don't care too much, but show the concept. Once we, we start going. Right, and so we now have just drilled a quarter inch into the hole. And so there are some techniques on how to drill. And lastly, since we always want to end up safe, Here's some final safety tips on working with power drills. The first thing I want to mention is to be careful of what is beneath your drilling surface. If you're drilling into a piece of wood on a bench and you are either supporting it with your hand or you have some other piece of equipment underneath that you don't want to get hurt, then that's not a good thing and you should make sure that you're drilling over a telephone book or even over the, even slightly off the bench. Like I did in my drilling technique clip. The second thing I want to mention is to use safety glasses. Because drilling can produce a fairly good amount of dust, be careful and use those safety glasses to, to cover your eyes in, in, in case of any particulates getting inside. And finally, if you're using a power drill, make sure that you're tying your hair if your hair is long and you're containing all of your jewelry if you have any. Because power drills rotate at such high speed and such high strength, they can easily wrap around something that's dangling and you definitely want to make sure that you're, you're keeping that safe by keeping it out of contact. Alright, so with those safety tips, I hope that you learned a lot in this video. I know I sure did. And if you have any questions about how to use a power drill, please leave a comment in the comment section. I'll gladly get back to you. Thanks.